So we finally set up a pen to train the pigs to electric fence. So this is the barnyard area right here and we have basically separated off this uh, small area back in this corner and we've set electric fence so it is completely going around the edges and the only way in and out is this gate back here. There's no electric fence in front of that gate. That's what we're going to try to bring the pigs in through this small gate here and then get them in here. So we got their food and water in here. We're still going to have to come up with some kind of shelter that they can get under. But we've just got our charger set up over here. There ended up being a ground rod actually already here in the ground. And uh, yeah, we've just temporarily set this up with electric fence all the way around. So now we're going to try to see if we can get the pigs in here and uh, get them trained up. So the way this is gonna work is, since it's completely fenced in, um, that'll keep the pigs from running through the electric fence. It'll keep them inside of here. And it'll also, it'll about teach them to stay away from the fence because there's no safe place to lay against the fence. They almost have to lay in the middle. And the longer they're in here, the more curiosity that it'll take and they'll get. And they'll finally learn that it's actually just that one single wire that's shocking them. Um, that may take a few days before they actually learn what's shocking them. But once they get to the point where they learn it's that, that electric wire, then we can finally move them over here to where their pig pen is. Go on. He's the timid one. He's the one that's going to shoot off running. Do you see food? Good. Okay. They're in. Good deal. Almost there. Look. Those would be the turkeys. They got like, looks like a little pimple on their head. Mm hmm. Weird. I'd say that's everything over here besides the Cornish cross chickens. I'd say these are all the meat chickens and then these are the, the ducks and the turkeys. So we just got our birds in the mail that we had ordered. 25 Cornish cross chickens, um, five female rowan ducks, five royal palm turkeys, and five meat turkeys, broad-breasted white turkeys. So Rebecca's gonna get all of their beaks dipped in the water so they know where the water is. And then uh, hopefully they'll come over here and huddle under the heat lamps to stay warm. chase the ducks well they kind of, they caught her further up on the land and she couldn't get away so we got a hold of her and she was kind of in rough shape but we got her cleaned up and disinfected and we brought her here in the barn she's been here for two days and she's doing okay so hopefully she makes it yeah she's healing up so i think she, she was sitting on a nest of eggs next to the old outhouse and uh so she probably didn't want to get off the nest eggs and the dogs got a hold of her. And then both dogs together, both dogs together are really, uh, they... Their prey instinct kicks in for sure. Yeah, they get competitive and we've had a lot of trouble here with them lately. 
So we they got a hold of a cat a couple weeks ago. And then um, they got a hold of a chicken that got out of the chicken coop. We got a, a chicken that got out of the barnyard. And they got a hold of it. And they mangled it. I had to end up. Dispatching it. I had to put that chicken down. We were afraid we'd have to do the same thing with this duck. But um, we it's. We give it, it a chance. Yeah, and it's actually done really well. Yeah. It looked really bad the other night. It's all its feathers were wet, so all you could see was like skin. And she's really like cleaned her feathers up. And you, you can't hardly tell that she's maimed anymore, you know? She really um, cleaned up pretty good. So we got the chicks and the turkeys and the ducks all moved into their new home in here in the brooder. I need to get a board or something and cover up this one side where they can, where they can kind of get around. And uh, hopefully uh, this rowan duck that we have in here, hopefully she doesn't fly over and get inside with them, try to eat their food or do anything. Hopefully she stays on her side of the brooder. She's very interested. She hears them. Yeah, she, she's listening to them. The cats are very interested too. Hopefully they, this is all half inch hardware cloth that surrounds it. It's completely enclosed. Hopefully the cats, I guess, can't get a claw through there and, and hurt one. So, but yeah, there's our birds showed up today. They showed up on time. We ended up ordering them from the Cackle Hatchery, which is in Missouri. And when you search up your big hatcheries that's probably the one that's the closest to us so that's what i based that off of is i wanted to order from the one that was the closest and they all seem to be active and the postal service their tracking information made it sound like they're going to show up a day late but they did end up showing up on time so that's good yeah because we just got through having a cold snap it got down to 20 six degrees or something yeah the day the dogs got this duck just a couple days ago it snowed here and we had snow on the ground and um, that's the day the, the birds shipped was during that cold weather so I was a little bit worried about it and uh, they all seem to be good and healthy and um, we'll just have to keep an eye on it I hear turkeys I mean there's always a chance of these little chickens dying but I hear turkeys are really susceptible when they're young for those first few weeks so we'll see how it all goes and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully they all live. So it's the next day and this morning I came out to let the animals out. I went to check the baby birds and I was afraid considering what happened yesterday we would have more dead this morning and there only ended up being one more that died this morning. It was a Cornish cross, so we've had a total of eight chicks die on us, and um, it is probably about one in the afternoon now. I've checked them again, and all of them are doing fine, so we're past that 24-hour uh, mark. We've had them for longer than a, a whole day, and hopefully, um, hopefully we're past that really uh, crucial part of getting the baby chicks, so hopefully we won't have too many losses after this. So, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move back over to the pigs. Let me show you uh, how the pigs are doing. They've been in their temporary pen for probably about six days now. So let's go check on them. So here's the pigs temporary pen. Um, they're back there in their hut sleeping. I just woke them up. So you can see we've paid a little, we made a little house out of straw bales and a sheet of plywood. I think there's about 10, I guess it's hay bales, about 10 hay bales there for them to have a little home in. And we've packed it full of hay. They keep packing it down every day. We go ahead and give them a, a little bit more for bedding. But uh, this has been their home. Um, I think they're trained up on electric wire now. So uh, what I wanna do to test it, I wanna make sure before I put them over here, over here is you can see this area right here. This is where their normal pig pen is. Um, and the only thing is, is this electric fence, three wires of electric fence. So before I move them over there to make sure they're trained, what I'm thinking is I'm going to take this, these cattle panels, these stock panels, I'm going to move them back that direction and set them up again. And I may add 
a couple more wires on here so it looks exactly the same as it does over here in their pig pen. And then we'll see whether they try to cross it or not. Because if they do try to cross it, at least they're still contained in here. And if I put them out here and they try to cross it, they'll go out here and they'll be out in the woods and we'll be chasing pigs. So I want to make sure that they're trained up. All right, we've got the stock panels moved backwards about eight feet in that direction. And we've changed this. So this is a three wire fence right there. And the test is to see whether these pigs, which are still laying down sleeping, um, whether they try to venture through this fence and try to get to that green grass over there. So we'll give them about a day and we'll see whether they make it over there or not. It'll probably be very evident if they get over there because they will root it up and we'll be able to tell um, where they've torn up the ground if they get onto that side. So it's been a few days now um, with this new setup here and the pigs, there's no sign that the pigs have ever moved into this area over here. So uh, I, think, I think that tells us that the pigs seem to be trained to electric fence because they didn't try to cross that. So. I think now's the time to move them over to the regular pig pen. Hey pigs. How you guys doing? They're not real happy with me with this electric fence. Now the other day Rebecca got in here and they still walked up to Rebecca and let her feed them, but they don't like me too much. So on the back of this corner of the barnyard, we actually have a, like a six foot gate back here. And what we're thinking about doing is we're thinking about setting up a way to get the pigs right over here to their pig pen, since this is their pig pen right here. So probably open these, these uh, pig panels, these uh, hog panels up, and then put a couple more panels leading over to there and make like a chute and see if we can just get the pigs to walk themselves over and straight into their pig pen. And uh, that'll, that'll help us from having to try to catch them or try to pick them up and haul them over here. So see if we can get them to walk over on their own. So we're gonna go grab some, some cattle panels and see if we can shut, set up like a, a small chute here to lead them over. Okay, like right there. Well, we think we're ready to move the pigs. We're just trying to figure out how we're gonna get them out of their, out of their little hut here and try to get them to go around the backside. So without running through the rest of this and getting too scared that they do run through the fence. But at least if they do that, they're in the barnyard, so. All right, they ran out of their hut. We're gonna try to, walk them around the side. Well, one went. And he came back. Well, at least they didn't run through the fence. Hi, pigs. I just, you, you might have to stand in front of them. All right, we'll try chasing them through again.
So the other day, Rebecca came with a lawnmower and she mowed around the pig pen as close as she could to the electric fence. And then I took a weed eater and I weed eated on both sides of the wire, tried to make sure that the fence was clear all the way around so it worked good. We put the feed trough in here the other day as well. And it is actually, it's nailed to the ground with like 12 inch long spikes that, that nail through it into the ground. And I've never had any trouble with the pigs being able to move it or shift it around. And it seemed to work out pretty good for us. So we just got done filling up the pig water. It's got three bite valves on it. The pigs can bite down on and get a drink of water. And um, I've got that strapped to a tree because this is unlevel ground. And as the, it ends up eventually knocking over. Either when it gets empty, they'll be able to knock it over. Or even when it's full, it's top heavy and wants to knock over. So strapped it to a tree. Um, that seems to work pretty good, finding a, a post or a tree to strap it to to keep it from getting pushed around or moved. So the pigs have never drank out of a pig waterer like that before, so we went ahead, we've left a water trough in here uh, for them to drink out of until we see them um, drinking out of the new waterer. It does drip a little bit, so they'll get curious and they'll go over to where it's dripping and they'll learn how it works. Pigs are pretty curious animals, and I won't be surprised if they learn how to drink out of that in a couple days. Well, I think it's taken a total of eight days from the time we built the pen, uh, the training pen, and then we altered the training pen to make sure they were trained, and then move them out here to their the, the regular pig pen, their permanent pig pen. So uh, that's been a long time in the making. They should have been in the barn, should have been out of the barn a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So happy to finally get them out of the barnyard, out of the barn, and over here. And they'll be a lot happier with this bigger area. They got shade over here. They got plenty of space to root up everything. Mm -hmm. I think the pigs are going to be way happier over here anyway. Yeah. So we ended up having a total of 12 of the birds that we got um, that died. Uh, we did ended up going to town for my birthday, going out to eat, and I picked up a couple more ducks because we only had two left. Uh, they were just assorted ducks, so I'm not sure what kind they are. Um, so now we have four ducks left. We haven't got a complete count of how many of everything we have left. Yeah, because they probably, they get, we know that they gave us extras. We ordered mm -hmm. 40 birds, and we're kind of guessing they ended up giving us at least one extra of each, maybe. So there ended up being maybe 40 or 45 birds in that box. Um, I yeah. think we had close to four of everything die. Four ducks, four turkeys, and four of the Cornish crosses. Yeah, and it, there's two different varieties of turkeys and um, not really sure. I think we had maybe more of the Royal Palms die, the ones yeah. that she was wanting. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, we'll get a count on them later and we'll see where we are. But I think we've had them now, this is like the third day or so we've had them and there's none died today. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they're doing good. They all seem to be moving around. Really don't want to lose any more. That seems like quite a bit to lose out of a, out of a mail order. And, and I would say, I think we, we should have done things maybe a little bit differently. And uh, we'll, we'll try to do better next time. Warm water, maybe have a little bit uh, warmer light maybe for them as well. Mm -hmm. But and keep, keep a closer eye on them. I think those first few hours we should have kept a closer eye on them because we definitely made a difference in a bunch of them yeah. that didn't look good by making them drink water. Um, so they seemed to turn around. So if we would have kept a closer eye on them, I think we, we wouldn't have had a, lost so many. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, I think that's it for today's video. Just sharing with you guys uh, what we're doing with the pigs and all the birds that we just got. Hopefully everything's going to go well with both of those the rest of the time we have them here on the farm. So I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.